Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to review our knowledge of linear concepts so we can solve a linear word problem. More specifically, we're going to review our knowledge of slope as well as the y-intercept and putting that all together in the form of an equation. So let's go ahead and read this problem and see what we have to do here. So it reads that you borrowed $300 from your brother and he's created two plans to help you decide how you want to pay it back. His plans are below. Assume each month equals four weeks. All right, so plan A shows that after two months, you still owe 220 bucks. After four months, you owe 140, and after six months, you owe $60. So it looks like over the course of months that the money you owe is less and less and less. So that means you must have started out with a certain amount of money, but it doesn't say in this table right here. And for plan B, we see that at zero weeks that you had $300 that you had owed. And five weeks later, you owed right between $200 and $250. So it looks like $225. Ten weeks later, you still owe $150. And eventually, at 20 weeks, you owe nothing. So this graph is definitely more detailed than this table. So we have to examine plan A versus plan B. Now one thing that we should notice right away is that with plan A the table is given in months but for plan B the graph is given in weeks. So that's a little bit of a problem so we have to be careful here. Now the problem did state that each month equals four weeks. Even though in the real world we know that's not true. A month is only four weeks in February. That's not a leap year. All right so we're just going to assume that each month here is four weeks. So two months right here, we would actually call that eight weeks. And four months here, four times four would be 16 weeks. And six months times four weeks would be 24 weeks. All right, so the first thing that we have to answer is how much money did you borrow initially? All right, so that means without any time going by, at the start of time, when you borrowed that money, you owe a certain amount. The word initially means at the beginning. Now notice for plan A it doesn't show what the initial amount is but it does for plan B. At zero weeks where this red line starts right here, you owe $300. Now what we should also remember is it says straight up in the problem how much you borrowed from your brother. It says right here $300. So that matches up with what this graph says right here. All right. Now it doesn't say this in the table here and that's because it doesn't list zero months here on the table. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next question which asks how much money does plan A have you pay back each week? Now whenever you are being asked a question that has to do with you know like in this case each week or per week or per something else you know like per mile or each mile that indicates a rate. And when you read language that deals with rates, right away we should think about ratios, which is a comparison of the amount of one unit to another unit. And in terms of linear equations, a rate really is the slope of the situation. Now remember, slope is the change in y values over the change in x values. So we have to really remember that. So if we take a look at plan A over here, okay, this column right here is our x column and this column here is our y column. And now to figure out what the rate's going to be each week, all we have to do is compare how the y's are changing from one y to the next and then compare how the corresponding x's are changing. And remember I already converted these months to weeks. So let's compare 8 to 16 because the question down here is asking each week. So we had to make sure that we're not looking at months right here. So if we take a look at 220 and 140, we would say that this dropped by $80. And if we take a look at 8 weeks to 16 weeks, that is a change in 8 weeks. So as a ratio, we would say that the change in Y was negative 80 because the amount owed went down 80 
and that was over an eight week period. Now, if we want to figure out how much it is each week, we just change this into a unit rate by dividing negative 80 by eight, which would be negative 10. All right, now why would it be negative? Well, the reason for that is because you started with $300 and each week you are taking away 10 from the total that's owed. So like after one week, you'd owe $290. And then if you took away 10 again, you would owe $280 and so forth. So for the second question here, how much does plan A having you pay back each week? We would just say $10. We don't have to say negative 10. But we should understand it really kind of is negative because, you know, you are diminishing the amount of money that you actually owe your brother. All right. Now let's compare this plan to plan B. Let's see how much under plan B you would have to pay back each week. Now what you do is you just have to figure out what the slope of this line is. All right. We figured out the slope of plan A using the table. And now we have to do the same thing for plan B. So what you would do is just find two points that are easy to work with on this line. And this is one right here. This is easy to work with here at the top. And here is another one. Or you could have used this one all the way at the bottom. Generally, I just like to find where the horizontal lines intersect the vertical lines. You know, it's kind of like a bullseye right in the middle. Those are easy points to work with. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did with plan A. We just have to figure out the change in Y over the change in X. Well. The Y value started at 300, and if we compare it to the Y of this point down here, it went to 150. So we started here and went to 150. So that dropped 150. And that was over a time period of from here to here, which is 10 weeks. So we would say that the rise is negative 150, and the run, is positive 10. Now if we simplify this, negative 150 divided by 10 is negative 15. So we would say that under plan B, you would plan on paying your brother back at a rate of $15 per week. So that is the answer for this third question, $15 each week. All right, now what we have to do is write an equation in y equals mx plus b form that represents each plan. So if we take a look at plan A, what we're going to do is start with y, which is our output, and that is going to be equal to, next we have to put slope, that's what the m represents, and the slope of plan A was negative 10, so we have to write negative 10, and we multiply that by the number of weeks. For example, if we plug 1 into x, for one week, one times negative 10 means that what you owe is going to go down by $10. If you plug a two in there for X, two times negative 10 means that you, what you owe or your balance is gonna be 20 less and so forth. And the Y intercept just means how much you actually started out with, which is $300. So this 300 is positive because that's what you owe your brother. That's the balance you owe. Now, as you start paying off $10 a week, all you would do is multiply negative 10 by the number of weeks, which would give you a negative value. And once you add it to the 300, you would get a number that's smaller than 300 until ultimately you arrive at $0 that you would owe your brother. All right, let's take a look at plan B. So once again, we start with Y, which is our output. We know that the balance is going to go down 15 each week, and we would multiply that by x, which is the input or the number of weeks, and we also start with a balance being owed of $300. So for plan B, you could plug in any number of weeks for x and solve, and that will tell you how much you would owe at that many weeks of payment. Same thing for this equation right here. You could plug in any number for x for the number of weeks, multiply by negative 10, and add that result to 300, and that would tell you how much you owe your brother at that point in time. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. 
Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.